Bingo, we're back. This is Think Tech, Talking Tax with Tom. I don't know what we do without you, Tom. That's Tom Yamachika. He's the president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. We're going to talk some tax with Tom. We just came back from crossover, and now's the time to look around and see what bills are still standing. And that is why we're, we're calling this Tax Bills Left Standing after the crossover. It's a reasonable, you know, logical step, don't you think? I guess so. <laughs> so what comes to mind at first, and you told me about this a minute ago, is that there's a bill that actually deals with the President of the United States. That's still standing. What is that bill? Okay, so uh, there are some people who are upset that um, President Trump uh, has not disclosed his tax returns well, while other presidents of the United States have. So, so the bill basically says, if you don't disclose your tax returns and you're a candidate for president of the U.S. or VP, um, we will not put you on our ballot. And even if you win, somehow, our electors won't vote for you. Wow. You, you win the, uh, the convention. The, you, know, in, you become the, the electoral the candidate. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. Okay. At the electoral college. That's, that's pretty draconian, but interesting. The problem, I think, what comes to my mind, I'm sure you have some issues here with this bill, too, is does he have any obligation to file tax returns here in Hawaii, eh? No. Oh. So um, we are trying to affect his conduct on a national basis. Yes, we are. And, and we, we, we want to uh, have those tax returns posted for all to see, not just those in Hawaii, but the entire world. Okay. Does it name him, or is it it's all candidates who are all, running all for president? All candidates for president and vice president. Yeah, we wouldn't want to do special legislation. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very interesting. Does that have a prayer of passing? Uh, well, it's on its way to the governor. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Um, it, uh, it's, a, it's, a how, it's a Senate bill that came over to the House, went to the House Judiciary Committee. They passed it unamended, which means <laughs> there is no chance left. Uh, to go to conference committee or anything else, it is done. Uh, and if it, if it passes, uh, if it passes the full house, it goes up to the fifth floor <laughs> for the governor's signature or veto. Okay. Now, uh, as you may, as you may uh, suspect, there are problems with this. Yes. Because uh, the Supreme Court has held that only the U.S. Constitution can provide qualifications for uh, federal offices like uh, Congress, Congress people, and senators, and even the even the president. Uh, so I don't think there's a specific case uh, that dealt with the president yet. There have been cases that dealt with the the, the um, uh, House of Representatives and the senators. Mm -hmm. And and it, it, the Supreme Court basically said, look, you know, the the requirements are in the Constitution. You, the state, can't add to them. I still love the bill. <clears throat> and has it made national news? Have other states, um, you know, introduced the same bill in their legislation? Uh, there are like half a dozen that, that have, yes. Uh, sort of be interesting to see how it plays out. I, we we, we uh, stand to be the laughing stock of the nation if this passes. Well, either in. that or, or in a funny leadership position, one or the other. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, that's, that's, that's good sauce to begin with. Uh, now, another one that um, is probably not going to happen is... Is carbon tax, where does that stand after the crossover? That is still alive. Mm. Um, but uh, as with a lot of things that happen you know, when bills cross over, uh, the uh, effective date of the bill is way, way in the future, and the relevant amounts are blank. So... Uh, the effective, uh, effective date. Effective, effective date and blank amounts. Yeah, it's not going to go anywhere. It's just a punt. No, it's very, very possible that uh, amounts can be put in back to the bill and it can be passed in conference. Wow, that'll be interesting. That'll, that'll put us up front too, won't it? Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, so far no state has passed a carbon tax. Cities have, no. Uh, but no state has passed a carbon tax. A lot of, it's the devil is in the detail and we don't have the detail in this bill, right? Well, the detail we have so far is that the carbon tax is supposed to be instead of the fuel tax and uh, the barrel tax. Now, fuel tax is, uh, of course, on, on, on uh, gasoline that you buy. 
and, and other kinds of fuel. But the primary purpose of it is to get funds for the highway fund uh, to basically measure road usage so, uh, or, or pay for road usage. So there are exemptions uh, such that if you don't use the fuel on the highways, you don't have to pay the tax. Mm. So, so, so the big potential losers for this are going to be farmers, right? Mm -hmm. Because they, they use uh, the fuel in farm machinery. And the electric companies, mm -hmm. because they burn bunker fuel. Um, and they are not subject to fuel tax now, but uh, they would be subject to carbon tax. What about the people who, I mean, this is based on mileage use, I guess. Um, what about the people who have to commute a long distance every day, in contradistinction to the people who live across the street from their places of business? Well, depending on how the, 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 um, the tax shakes out, the people with long commutes may be better off because less of the burden is going to go on the fuel and more is going to go on to the, uh, the, the, uh, the non-combustion uh, engine producers mm -hmm. uh, of, of, of the, the greenhouse gases mm -hmm. like, like mm -hmm. the electric company. But do you think the electric company is going to stand by and just absorb the tax? Not a chance. We'll pass it through. We'll pass it. They'll pass it through. Yeah. Well, we have a long way to go, to use that kind of expression. We have a long way to go before we're going to get home on this one. I, I, mean, I, I mean, even if somehow all the pukas are filled in and a conference committee puts it together as a real bill, you, you're going to have a big fight on, on signature, I think, on this one. And um, who knows what, what else. Uh, and implementing is going to be hard, especially when it's supposed to displace the existing uh, gasoline, gasoline tax bills. So yeah, there seems will be like a long way off, yeah. Uh, oh, one other, one other questionable bill was the bill about uh, favoring locally grown produce, which I think is a wonderful idea, and we need that, except that the bill may have constitutional issues because of the Commerce Clause. What's the status of that one? Well, it's still alive. Um, you know, it's, when you look at the testimony uh, behind the bill, it's full of support, lots of letters of support. Darn, it's a good idea. We ought to do this. Except um, we can't. We're a state. We're, We're a state in the state in the union. And, and we can't we, discriminate. We can't discriminate against interstate and, and local. Yeah. When, when it comes to our marketplace. Sure wish we could. I mean, is there, do you think, I mean, this is a question of creativity, I suppose. Is there a way we could do this without violating the Constitution? No. <laughs> Short answer. Short answer, no. Okay, let's look at some of the others uh, now. Um, um, how about this one called Marketplace Facilitation? And that, you told me beforehand, was it's final. It's going to the governor for signature or likely to go to the governor. Yeah. Right, so here's how that works. Um, uh, we have online marketplaces like Amazon Marketplace. I think Walmart has one. There are a few other, uh, you know, big uh, um, retail distribution chains that have, you know, marketplace facilitation setups whereby, you know, uh, a, a small seller, like say somebody who who, who sells dog food in Arizona, mm -hmm. uh, can have access to a national marketplace mm -hmm. by going through these facilitators. Mm -hmm. And uh, a company like you know Amazon, uh, they'll take your orders, they'll take your money, and they'll transmit your orders to the seller who will then ship the product, uh, they get paid. You know, they get paid by Amazon after they take their cut, of course, and um, and everybody's happy. Right? So, uh, but this is a this is a, this bill is an attempt to close a loophole. What's the loophole? Yeah, the, the loophole is who gets to tax the little you know, a dog food store in in, in Arizona. Um, Arizona doesn't because it's making an export sale, right? And Hawaii. Uh, and if and if um, Hawaii can, who do they tax? There, uh, you know, there isn't enough connection with Hawaii to allow Hawaii to certain nexus directly over the the Arizona dog food seller. Even if you impose a two hundred transaction or hundred thousand dollars requirement, you're not going to have that much in Hawaii sales. I would guess. Uh, so the bill says, all right, fine. What we're going to do is make the marketplace pay the tax as if it were the retailer. And 
then the dog food seller is going to sell to the marketplace as a wholesale sale. Mm. Okay, so they're still liable for the tax, but at the half percent rate. So in practical terms, nobody's going to go after. So, uh, so okay, right now this this dog food seller is uh, is not paying gross excise tax. Is Amazon paying gross excise tax on what it sells from the dog food seller on the mainland? Is is there gross excise tax of any kind being paid on this dog food? Uh, there wasn't before. Okay. Right now, because there's none. I, I'm not sure about right now because uh, I was told this morning that Amazon changed the practice. Uh. Okay. But, but the rule used to be that if Amazon sold uh, the dog food itself and fu you know, f fulfilled by Amazon, uh, then it would pay the tax and it would, it would charge the customer. Mm -hmm. uh, but if it was fulfilling the order on behalf of somebody else who didn't have tax excess with Hawaii, then they wouldn't charge the tax. Well, more and more you see that on Amazon. Amazon, you know, it's really ambitious. And you see, A, the things that Amazon stocks itself. See, B, the things where Amazon tells you they're going to get it for you and send it to you. They're still obligated to fulfill. And I suppose that the, under the Supreme Court case and the statute so far, they, they pay the state gross excise tax on those two items. But the third one is different. This, this marketplace facilitator is different because it somehow ma manage, manages to avoid a direct, rather an indirect sale through Amazon and has a direct sale to you. Is that what it is? Yeah, so, so the, the theory, at least before, was um, if Amazon is just acting as an agent of, uh, on behalf of the uh, Arizona seller, um, they, they don't have to pay tax on anything but their own income, which is their, you know, like the commission that they, they make. Uh, and the Arizona seller would have to, you know, settle any tax dispute with mm -hmm. Hawaii. Uh, but if they, did, if they didn't have physical presence in Hawaii, there was none. Okay, so this is, this new, this um, closing the loophole is going to tax Amazon for the fellow with the dog food on the mainland. Right. He, he used to be able to go um, directly to the buyer here, and thus both he and Amazon would avoid a paying gross excise. Now, this bill would, would fall on Amazon to pay the gross excise on the marketplace facilitator yeah, well, that, Amazon is the marketplace facilitator. But the, yeah. the dog food shipper from the mainland. Right, right, right. Well, that sounds only fair, and it's appropriate to, you know, to um, close the loophole, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it's, it's certainly a, a paradigm shift. Um, but I think after the, the Supreme Court's decision last year, uh, you know, something like that was, was coming. Yeah, right. It's just a matter of tuning it up. Right. Yeah, because it, right now it's probably not covered, but it will be covered if this bill passes. And you said this bill was, quote, final, which means what? What does that mean to say this bill is final after the crossover? Uh, what happened was this, it was a Senate bill that went over to the House. It was referred to the House Finance Committee. House Finance Committee passed it unamended. Okay, so it doesn't need to go to conference? Nope. It go, does it need to go to the, for a full vote of the House or the Senate now? For a full vote of the House, and that's it. Yeah, but there's really no reason why it wouldn't pass. It's been committed already. Right. And it'll go then to the governor for signature, so this is a, this is a, a done deal, really. Pretty much. Yeah, and, and, and of course, he would sign a bill that would enhance state revenue, wouldn't he? You would think so. You would think so. Yeah. Okay, but you know what? We're not final. We're only halfway through the show. and. And we're going to take a minute off and come back, and then we're going to go final on the show, because there's more to cover right after this break. Watch. Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch, uh, for our mission of empowerment, we aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha.
Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Oh, we got treats for you. <laughs> We're back in, in, the, in the, the, final, the final innings of our, of our show about talking tax with Tom, talking about what tax bills are left standing uh, after the crossover. And during the break, he handed me this, this long spreadsheet with lots of notes on it. And he said, wherever there are notes, that's the ones we should talk about. That's why we're making this a six-hour show. You know? uh, we, oh, Not we, yet. Cheer up, we got 15 minutes. So some of the ones that come to my mind just flashing on this is, hey, the tax boards of review are being changed. I thought it was archaic years ago. Is it, is it less archaic now? No, it's just that nobody signs up to be one. Um, okay. So they, so they can't get people on the boards, uh, and, and the boards can't function. It can't function for the lack of interest. Lack, lack of a quorum, yeah. yeah okay, so what, what's the change then, and how will it affect us? Okay, so, so right now the boards are there to, to decide tax disputes. So if you have a problem with the state uh, and, and you, you talk to them and, and disagree on the result, because uh, they're going to say you owe, you owe more and you're going to say you owe less, uh, then you can have uh, a couple of ways to appeal. One is you go through the court system. Right to the tax court. Right. The second is you can take advantage of one of these boards. And there's one in every county right now? In theory, again, I think only, okay. only one of them is staffed. Okay, it's not a job you want anyway. It sounds boring. Anyway, so now we've got the tax, the tax review boards, and that's for every kind of tax. And you can, you can elect to go there before you have to file a, an a action, a, a tax appeal in the tax appeal court. Right. And there's, uh, is there one tax appeal court or one, one. For, one for the whole state? One for the whole state. Okay, yes. that's good for uniformity. So, okay, it's not working the way it is, and they're making a single tax review board instead of having one, yeah, but, one but for this, every county. Yeah, so, so they would have administrative hearing officers, similar to how it works for Department of Labor. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they will have uh, people who are hired and paid by the Department of Tax to serve as your, uh, as your hearing officer. Now, they, they, wouldn't be, uh, they wouldn't be auditors. You know, at least at the same time. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure who they would be, and maybe they'd, maybe they'd be attorneys. Uh, but they would uh, hear and decide on mm -hmm. uh, your tax dispute, yeah. and then you then you can decide whether you go to a real court or not. Yeah. Well, the, uh, my recollection is that the boards of review were really civilians, and some of them were just ordinary lay civilians. They weren't necessarily skilled. In in the area, area of tax. So when you went to them, you could have a very sympathetic ear as taxpayer to taxpayer, you know, and they, and they, they might give you a break. Um, it sound, and, but a lot of people, they weren't, didn't want to serve on those boards, so now we're going to change this. But I think it sounds like it's going to be more professional, more experts on this new one, this new, what are you calling the new one? Tax Appeals Review Panel. Yeah. Um, and less likely you'll have a sympathetic ear. Am I right about that? <laughs> Who knows? There's a method about this madness, you know? Yeah. Uh, so. I mean, you've you, you got to wonder when the, uh, when the hearing officers are, are employees of the department. Uh, right. But, they're in conflict. They can't, they can't really rule, rule against the department so well because the department needs the revenue. <laughs> <laughs> so is this going to pass? Probably will. It Any probably opposition? Will. You know, I don't, are you uh, taking a position on it? No. No, and, and, and there is no discernible opposition. Yeah, okay, it'll probably pass. Then. Yeah. No. Okay, I can't say that I'm thrilled about that. I'm not, not thrilled with the fact that people have not been willing to serve. I'm not thrilled with the fact that sort of a lay jury approach is being replaced by Yeah, uh, I think a you know, one, of, one, of the, one of the problems um, is that, you know, if, you're, if, you're, if you were to serve on 
a board, like if I were to serve on a board, right, I would be considered a, an employee of the department for ethics purposes. So I wouldn't be able to practice because most of my practice is before the department. Yep. Uh, you know, for the time that I'm on the board and for one year afterward. Yeah. Oh, that's a bad job. That's a bummer. Uh, yeah, I mean, it... it uh, Why would you ever want to do that? Well, if I didn't want to feed my family. <laughs> or if I were retired, maybe I would consider it. The only person but if who I was, might want to do that is somebody who didn't care about practicing in, in tax at all. Well, yeah, if, if, if they were, for example, in, uh, you know, uh, hired by just one company, like a, right. a controller or somebody right. like that, and, and I think there have been people like that. Or uh, if you had a, a practice that was all federal, then you wouldn't care. Mm. Uh, I mean, I, I, I would care because, you know, most of my practice involves state law. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that. Okay. Let's, can we move on to changes in the income tax and income tax deductions in the state of Hawaii? What, what's, what's on the griddle here after the crossover? Okay. There's a, there's a bill uh, that would change income tax rates. Okay. As introduced, uh, it was basically there to lop off the lower brackets because you know people earning like two thousand to three thousand dollars probably won't pay tax anyway, and it's and it's not worth our while to chase them. Okay, um, but now uh, the way the bill looks like, all the all the amounts have been blanked out, so so we don't know whether it's going to be a. Uh, do the same thing, or whether it's going to be a massive tax hike. That's refreshing, Tom. So we don't know until conference, and conference, we really can't say anything at conference. It'll be a surprise. It'll be a big surprise. How, how dramatic. And then at the end of that, we might find out that... Um, Who says tax is boring? It's, no, it's not boring. That? No, not, not true. Certainly at conference, because you could really be surprised on a bill like a this. A lot of surprises. In fact, there's a fair chance we'll be surprised. They'll fill in the pukas, they'll, they'll say we need more money, and before you know it, you'll have a huge tax hike, you, you won't have any opportunity to comment on it. Yeah. yeah. And, that, and, that's scary. And if the governor is uh, motivated to try to increase revenues, he'll sign it. Yeah. That's scary. It that's is scary. scary. Oh, huge was the word you used, I thought. Huge. Okay, so uh, let's talk about um, gross excise tax. Um, what, what can we expect on that? Is there a bill pending that would increase gross, gross excise tax in yeah, the state? Uh, yes, there is. There's a, there's a half percent ET hike. Uh, it was proposed by, uh, or by higher education or lower education. So HST is backing it. UHPA is backing it. Um, uh, it's, it's interesting because it comes on the heels of uh, that uh, on that constitutional amendment fight that we had this past summer. On education. And on education. Real estate. And, and the voters said, we don't want this. Uh, or at least the ones that, that voted said that. Uh, the, the ballot measure itself was invalidated because it was too vague. Taxes never go down. And, but the reason why the HSTA in particular sought that ballot measure in the first place is because they were told that a GET increase would never pass. Okay, but now, now that the, the property tax measure has gone down, you know, they went back to defy conventional wisdom and, hey, let's get this GT increase passed. And, and, they're, and they're finding some sympathetic ear uh, in, in the senators. So uh, the, the senators heard it, passed it, now it's over to the House. I don't think people realize, but I'd like to take a moment with you and and just review this one thing, comes out of George Freitas, remember him? Yes, of course. Um, his mission in life, uh, he was the leader in the tax office, his mission in life was to have the um, gross excise tax apply to everything, without any exemptions, exceptions, exclusions, everything. And, the result, and he achieved that over, over his career. And uh, we, we are unique in that way, because other states may have a sales tax or something akin to a sales tax. And, and there are exceptions and exclusions and the like. We don't have exceptions. And so the result well, We actually is, have a lot of them. We used to have a lot of them? No, we, we still do. What? Name one. Uh, like, there's, there's no GE tax on stocks and bonds there's, or, or capital gains. There's no tax on dividends. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm talking about sales. 
I'm talking about, you know, like when you, know, you buy some pharmacy products and longs, well, that's you exempt. pay tax on that. There's that's no exempt. Pharmacy products? Yeah. Okay. All uh, right. You're ahead if, of if, they're, if they're prescribed for your use. Oh, but non-prescribed. Yeah, uh, I mean, if it's... Drugs if it's, off the shelf are not are subject to tax. That's correct. And how about food? Uh, most food is taxable. Taxable. So that, that's a, that differentiates us from other states where there are exemptions along those lines. <clears throat> so when you add 0.5 on already, you know, on 4.0712, whatever it is, um, now, now you're getting, you know, close to 5% already. It's more than it would be in another state um, because it, it, it is it's on every level of commerce and because there are so few exemptions and exceptions. So, it's, you know, if you, if you did a matrix on this, you would say, well, if you took the same rules and applied them in another state, it would actually be much more a percentage. I mean, what I mean is it's, it's, it, you have to compare it to other states, and then you get the true, the true rate. Of, and the true rate of how it affects people and the fact that it's regressive. I'm not a favor of, I'm not a, a, a big booster of yeah, a big one, gross one, excise tax because I think it's very, very regressive. Yeah, one of the problems that's often been cited with, with the GET is that it, it falls harder on poor people who need to buy more stuff, uh, you know, relative to the income that they make. So, uh, uh, by one estimation, uh, you know, the poor people have to pay like 14% of their income in taxes, state tax, while uh, richer people have to pay like, you know, maybe 8%. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, so in New York State, for example, the sales taxes, uh, it's really like 12% or something. I don't forget what it is. But we That's why you're not there anymore. Huh? That's why you're not there anymore. <laughs> One of the reasons. But we at 5% are actually much closer to that 12% than we think we are because of the way it works, the way it affects people. And here they go, raising it yet again. Okay, We're trying to. We, we, it, it, it's, it's, you it's think not, it's going to work? It's uh, a lot of bills. You know, in, and this is kind of like my historical observation. Um, they, they, they start off in the Senate, they pass the Senate, they go over to the House, they get killed, they get killed in the House. Why? Because House members are reelected every two years. Not so for the Senate. Uh huh. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, a House member who, who votes for such an increase. Uh, we'll only have to wait for one, one, one year or so. Before the public catches up with them. Right. <laughs> Good. It's a brilliant system. <laughs> okay, I think we have time. There's, for... there's, 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 a, there's reasons for it, man. Yeah. We have time for like one more. Well, two more, real quick. Um, energy. Um, you know, the, the, they've been trying for three years or more to get the tax uh, credit for energy. Uh, or uh, renewables who also include uh, a tax credit for storage for batteries. Battery backup systems, And that's yeah. still pending. This is like the third year running. Uh, what does it look like on that one? I think it's dead for this year. Why? Um, it's such a good idea. It's so appropriate. I mean, the storage and batteries, they go hand in glove like love and marriage. Well, if the, I think if you, if you uh, build your battery system with the, with the PV, uh, then, then you have a good, good case to, to, to take it as part of the PV system. Um, but it's not clear. But it's, but it's not clear. And the, the, the question is, what if you, you know, get a battery by itself? Right. right. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. And you know, there's, there's no indication of why you would need one, uh, whether it would be part of your renewable energy or not. And, and maybe that's the problem. Well, maybe the problem is that the... Uh that the state legislature, that the state government doesn't, is not really committed uh, to getting to 45%, you know, pursuant to the goal, the target. Uh, yeah, they'll, 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 I'm sorry, they'll, they'll 100% by the year 2045. They'll jack up the fuel tax. Yeah. Or, 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 or put in a carbon tax and jack that up. Yeah. Well, it all sounds like, you know, there's not a big plan going on here. And uh, we're, not, we're not really going to move ahead on tax credits for renewables uh, together with storage. And uh, it's really too bad. I, you know, for three years, this has been languishing. And, and here we go. A lot of things have been year. languishing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, people keep trying and trying and trying on, on other things that have failed in, in years yeah. past. So where's the policy? Where's, I mean, do we have a, a policy on energy as reflected in, in tax bills? No. Well, I mean, uh, there's, there doesn't seem to be a centralized source of leadership. Okay, well, we're out of time, but I could ask you this. Um, how does it look now? Uh, is it too early for me to ask, when we get to the end of the road on this, um, looking there now, trying to be there now, what, what kind of a legislature has this been? Has it's, it's, it been really, it's really too early to tell, um, because a lot of what's, what's happened so far is, is positioning and repositioning uh, these bills. The real work's going to happen in conference, and we're not going to know the final contours of anything, uh, especially if they keep blanking stuff out and, and, uh, and making defective dates. We, we don't know what, what we're in for until, until the very end. Okay. Well, you and I have to continue to follow it, and especially at the very end, so we can take a quick look back at those conference committees and how these bills that other bills do in conference committee and what kinds of uh, breathtaking surprises uh, we, we yeah, have. Yeah, conference committees always started meeting on the budget, so um, it's, it's, it started. Okay, that'll be what? We'll be, we'll, we'll be um, out of the woods here, so to speak, in what, middle May? Yeah, or, early then, May is when the when legislature adjourns, so yeah. we're, still, we're still in for a rough, a rough ride until then. Yeah, okay, well, we have to keep talking, Tom. We do. It's great stuff. Tom Yamachika. President of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Thank you for having me on the show. Talking tax with us.